the dogs are back home here on the banks of Lake Washington at Husky Stadium. The Washington Huskies ranked number nine in the country this afternoon take on the BYU Cougars. Hi, everybody, along with Sonny Six Killer, I'm Kevin Calabro. As you know, the Huskies had the bye weekend last weekend. It gave them a chance to get some people injured because after that miracle in the desert, 42-38, the victory over ASU, they had some folks dinged up, most notably at linebacker position where Marcus Hairston, as we understand it, will not be getting the start today due to the ankle, Sonny. That's right, Kevin. You know, one thing, the Huskies, you think during a bye week, everybody will be healthy, <laughs> but they still have to go out and practice. And one thing about practicing, that these guys will bang them around out there and guys can get hurt. Filling in for Marcus Harrison today, Kevin, is a young redshirt freshman, Kenny Walker, from the islands of Hawaii. Now, you take a look at that list, and there were a couple of receivers down. Jawarren Hooker, the slightly separated shoulder, along with Dane Looker. He had the quadricep bruise, but as we understand, they'll both be playing. Nonetheless, the Huskies have got to get some other folks to contribute out there. You're absolutely right. Sophomore flanker Gerald Harris, number nine, four receptions against ASU two weeks ago, needs to come up with about four or five more. Jeremiah Farms, number four, taking over for Jason Chorak, needs to get to the quarterback, Kevin Federick, this afternoon. Ronnie Jenkins did an outstanding job in BYU's win over ASU, rushed for over 170 yards, and, you know, this is passing university BYU. They don't talk about guys that can run the football much. Well, that's right. The reason I mentioned Kevin Federick is that he has to hand off to Ronnie Jenkins, <laughs> and that whole defense has to take care of a guy. He runs 4-3 last week, well over 100 yards against ASU, so they need to shut him down. They are fired up here at Husky Stadium. The Huskies are 8-1 in the last nine bye situations coming back after a bye weekend, and they have won their last 12 home openers dating back to 1985. This afternoon, they take on the BYU Cougars. And, of course, it was Washington last year winning in Provo when this man, Brock Hewitt, had such a big day. The Cougars and Dogs coming up next. The Brigham Young University Cougars last weekend upset Arizona State University. And today they will test the medal of the Washington Huskies. The Huskies have elected to receive the kickoff, and it is Joe Jarzinka back at his own goal line. He's going to cut to the 20, to the 25 here to the near side. He has spilled. The football rolls free, but it's ruled a dead ball. And the Huskies will begin at their own 24-yard line with Brock Hewitt at the control. 6'5 and 225. The junior from Puyallup High School had a sensational afternoon two weekends ago down in Tempe, Arizona. He set career highs with 47 passes, attempted 27 completions at 318 yards, and he distributed the ball beautifully to several receivers. Now he has four receivers on the left-hand side and the solo receiver flanked out to the right side. He is in the shotgun. Gets the snap at the 15, quick flip out to the left side, incomplete intended for Joe Jarzinka. Let's set the Husky lineup for you. Brought to you by Wade Cook Financial Advisors. Silvers, Coates, Hutt, Ward, and Dalen up front on the offensive line for Washington. Hooker, Davis, Shaw, Harris, and Jarzinka at the so-called skilled position. Jarzinka will get a lot of time this afternoon because of the injury to Dane Looker who had the 11 receptions down in Tempe. Looker however is healthy this afternoon. We are told that he might play in this game. He did suit up, did warm up. Here's the handoff. Trek opener up the middle across the 30 yard line. Knocked down at about the 33 is Maurice Shaw who had 15 carries for 58 yards and a TD down in Tempe. The tackle made by Chris Ellison, who's part of a pretty impressive BYU group. Let's set the defense for you. It'll be Olsen, Yancey, Mangale, and Frisch up front. Frisch leads those four down linemen. Stevenson, Morris, and Martin, the linebackers. Gray, Walker, Ellison, and Robertson. The two cornerbacks are brand new to BYU. Robertson and Gray, both are JUCO transfers. Lavelle Edwards now in his 27th year at BYU. Here is Ewart now. Third down, and the handoff 
to Shaw up the middle, grinding ahead Sonny Sixkiller to his own 36-yard line for a Husky first down. Well, we talked all week, Kevin, about the offensive line for the Huskies to take it after these BYU defenders. They've, they're very, they're veterans up front. They've been around a long time. You look at 97, Darren Yancey, he's a big horse down there, 305 pounds. Good job by the offensive line. And that was Pat Conniff, not Shaw. I misspoke. Conniff, of course, had the 16-yard TD run down in Tempe out of Woodenville. He gets the first down for the Huskies, and Ewart goes back to work. He'll hand off. And the back hit behind the line of scrimmage. Maurice Shaw spilled for a loss. Byron Frisch back there. He's a load. 6'5", 270. Teaming in there was Derek Stevenson as well. Well, he's one guy that we're the offensive line coach for the Huskies. Coach Morton. You see right there, he just busts through. Head on. Nobody slowed him down. Aaron Dalen's going to have his hands full today with Byron Frisch. Frisch from Benita, California. Now the Huskies have wide receivers to the right, and they have trips to the left. Hewitt is in under center. Three-step drop, looking left. Guns it outside, underthrown to Reggie Davis, and Brock took a shot. Kevin, coming in this ballgame, you, you think after the ASU game that BYU would come up with a nickel package. They have elected to go with their four regular DBs playing tough man-to-man, -man, and they're coming after Brock. That time you saw Rob Morris their number one tackler from a year ago come in and nail him. Ellison with a hard safety blitz as well. He was in there to discourage Brock Hewitt. And now it's third down and 12 for the Huskies. The ball resting at their own 34-yard line. The Warren Hooker is wide to the right. In the slot alongside Hooker is Jarzinka. Hooker coming across the middle. Hewitt looking that way. Hooker made the catch. He's knocked down hard. Ball free, but a dead ball. Flag on the play, and it's back at the Husky 20-yard line. Rob Morris put a lick on Hooker, who was doing a crossing pattern, and Morris picked him up immediately and put a shot on him. It looked like it may be roughing the passer, but you see right here, they're looking for this little under route. Rob Morris is sitting back in the middle waiting for somebody to cross. Now on the far side, you look as it comes into your screen right there, way late. Darren Yancey just a little bit late on that contact. So it's roughing the passer, and the Huskies benefit because the ball is going to be marched up, Sonny, to the 49-yard line. I'll tell you, all afternoon it's going to be something to watch down in the trenches because Elliott Silver, 68 for the Huskies, really took offense to that late hit. And I'm telling you, I'm going to be watching number 68 for the Huskies. Silvers with Coates, Hutt, Ward, and Dalen up front for the Huskies. First and 10, ball at their own 49. Ewart, quick drop, looking right side, slants a pass outside, over through off the fingertips of Gerald Harris. And down there in coverage for BYU. And again, they put a pretty good shot on a Washington receiver. That was Brian Gray unloading. Gray, that Juco transfer from Hawthorne, California. Big kid, 6'2 and 215. You don't see too many corners that size, but <laughs> he's more like a safety. But I just can't believe that Again, Darren Yancey, 97 for BYU, was putting some pressure on Brock. Harrison Hooker, wide right. Everybody else stays home on the line, and the lone back is Maurice Shaw, second and 10. Ewart, roll out, handoff, Shaw, trying to turn the corner to the 50, does flag on the play. He's knocked down at the 48-yard line of BYU. BYU bringing in these JC corners. Uh, very athletic on the defensive side. We've already seen the size and the impact of the D linemen. Their linebackers are tough. Holding on the Huskies is the preliminary indication from the officials. See what hash mark they're on, Kevin? They're on the far left hash mark, or the left hash mark here. Stretching out. BYU does a great job of stretching out, stretching it out. Guys can only hold their block so long before they get the defender gets an angle on them and it's just natural to grab a little uh, jersey. I see Rob Workup make the tackle. The junior for BYU. You know, and Kevin, I'm sorry, but you go from the far hash mark to, to the near numbers, that's a long ways for a sweep to take place. You need to cut it up and just get what you can. Second and 19 now for Washington. You were backing up. 
checking at the line. And the quick handoff to Maury Shaw. Trying to guide his way up the middle. Does. Leans ahead to the 49-yard line. And he took Chris Ellison a good three or four yards with him before Ellison was finally able to drag him down. Well, when you spread the defense as wide as the Huskies are spreading them out, Kim, you got, you know, the wide receivers out on the numbers. It's a lot of turf. And if the running back can get up the middle with a linebacker trying to shoot a gap or something or a big block on one guy, you're going to get some good yardage. Watch 44 right here. Rob Morris, nice uh, grab there by Chad Ward. A little bit outside the line. No call on it, but uh, again, he, at least he's on him. Harris is in motion now for the Huskies, third and nine. Hewitt rolling left, hard rush, wheels it back to the near side. It's caught. Huskies trying to set up some, some, uh, a picket line down there with, with three offensive linemen. It was Reggie Davis trying to maneuver by his own men and a gain maybe of a yard or two on the play. Rob Morris with the tackle, Sonny. Well, you've got Reggie Davis out in the pattern and trying to set up a tight end H-back kind of scenario screen to the near side. And, you know, everybody's looking for Reggie Davis after that big game he had against ASU two weeks ago. Aaron Roderick is back to receive now for BYU as the Huskies are forced to punt on fourth and eight. And it'll be Ryan Fleming who averaged close to 44 yards per kick down in Tempe two weeks ago. The snap and the kick delivered from his own 39 yard line taken down there by Roderick at the 20 yard line and BYU will go to work. We'll be back to take a look at Frederick Jenkins and BYU and company in just a moment. BYU will start their offensive assault the first of the afternoon on the Huskies. BYU lost to Alabama 38-31 down in Alabama. Kevin Federick had a big day. He had 19 of 30 completed for a touchdown pass. He is the quarterback now for BYU. He will roll out hand to Jenkins trying to cut it up the middle knock down a bevy of Huskies there led by Marcus Hairston who really wasn't supposed to play a whole lot this afternoon but he is back in the starting lineup Lester Towns there Mac Tui Aia as well. Let's set the lineup now for BYU you can see Kevin Federick the left handed quarterback the junior from Los Alamitos California up front he's got Wong Johnson Richard Skiba and Tate. Tate is the headliner up there he's a load six seven and two or make that three ten hooks Roderick Shiitake and Jenkins with Offa Hangaway, the tight end. BYU first and five. Make that a second and five. Federick back to throw. Guns it out wide here to the near side. Offa Hangaway, the intended receiver, off his fingertips and out of bounds. Defensively for Washington today, Lester Towns, who is progressively getting better after offseason foot surgery, will be in the middle linebacking core up front Smith and Tui Aiea trying to provide some interference for a man towns and the defensive backs are Burton Jones Smith and Turi Butler BYU going to the line and a flag flies before Federick could get under center Federick missed the last three games of last year's season for Lavelle Edwards and they had Drew Miller step in Miller is actually from Lakewood High School down in Tacoma 511 200 pound sophomore started the last three games of the year but the left hander Federick is back and a procedure call on BYU that makes it second and ten now for the Cougars of Brigham Young University BYU with multiple receivers trips on the left hand side Here's Federick rolling that way. He's going to be forced to run to the 20 and out of bounds. He's accompanied at about the 25 yard line. No score yet. Lester Towns, Sonny, <laughs> looks healthy. Uh, he went the width of the field that time with Jabari Issa. It's good to have Lester back, as you know. <laughs> On the other side. You're going to have a guy that has 4-3 speed and Kevin Federick who does love to roll out. You need linebackers that are active and D linemen that have speed 
Jabari Issa and Mac Tuiaia have that, but it's good to see number 17 in there. Federick, quite an athlete in his days at Los Alamitos, California. 3,200 yards, 29 TDs his senior year. And the left-hander back to throw at his 20s, scrambling, looks to the middle, trying to gun it over the middle. Pass incomplete down there in tight coverage and doing an outstanding job is Todd Johnson, who came up big in his hometown of Tempe, Arizona, or Phoenix, Arizona. He's from Peoria, actually, last weekend in the win. Uh, looks like the Huskies got away with one here, Kevin, because Todd Johnson, as you say, was in very tight coverage right there. Looked to me like a... Oakley Hangaway was a little bit interfered with. And Todd is the kid from right here in Bellevue. Jeff Johnson, no relation, is the fellow from Peoria who had a big weekend last weekend. And Jeff will figure to see some action here this afternoon. J.D. Hartsfield back to punt. And man, did he get a foot into that one. Driving Little Joe back to the 15. Jitterbucks to the 20, 25, cut back, blindsided, knocked down, hangs onto the football, and has rolled down to the turf at the 27-yard line. No score yet. Huskies will take it for the second time this afternoon when we return. Well, the Husky defense holds, forcing BYU to punt the football. Jim Lambright's Huskies take over, and of course the fans here, a sold-out crowd and the home opener here at Husky Stadium are seeing a, a different wrinkle for the Huskies this year, Sonny. Different formations, and I would venture to say a lot of folks have ever seen here at Husky Stadium. Here's Ewart back to throw. He's going to gun one to Reggie Davis, who found a seam and dives across <laughs> for the first down at about his own 38-yard line. Chris Ellison with a stop on Reggie Davis. Reggie Davis with a big catch. May have got his leg dinged up there. As you notice at the end of the play, someone diving through the air and landing on his legs. But nice catch here. Has to turn around quickly. And that looks like it probably did hurt a little bit. Harrison Hooker, wide receivers to the right. And it's Maury Shaw in the backfield for Brock Ewart. Looking first and ten, trying to get something rolling early here in this football game at his own 37. Brock hands off, and again it's Shaw trying to string things out to the right side, and he just, as Sonny said, does not have that explosive running ability to turn the corner and outrun people. Uh, he's more of a guy that's going to be shooting up the middle, trying to find a gap and wriggling free off the pile. Well, I think off this type of offense where you have the receivers set out so wide, Kevin, BYU... They always have had a pretty solid defense, and uh, they're going to string it out there, and you might as well just turn it up, like I said before, and get what you can. The Huskies this afternoon, we're told, will use some freshmen in the backfield as well. Willie Hurst, the freshman from Compton, and Braxton Clemen, the freshman from Oroville High School, right here in the state of Washington. Second and 13. We haven't seen either one of those fellows this afternoon. Here's the handoff to Sean. He's stacked up behind the line of scrimmage at his own 35. Darren Yancey with a stop up front. Tell you, Darren Yancey's having a heck of a ball game so far in the first quarter. He's creating some havoc down there. Jurgens and Davis come in for the Huskies. Anthony Meisen comes off. Hooker set out here to the near side wide. Pair of receivers to the left side. Shaw the offset back. Here's Ewart back to throw, looking down the middle. Deep ball knocked away and incomplete. Jergens, the intended receiver, down at the 45-yard line of BYU. Tyler Nelson there with the stop. And the Huskies are, forth to punt, are forced to punt the football. Look at the tight coverage out there. You got markup out there one-on-one -on -one with Chris Jergens and also a little help from behind there. Jason Walker, the safety, just sitting back there watching Brock's eyes, and he was all over that pass. Fleming then forced to punt quickly. Roderick is waiting for BYU back at his own 25-yard line. High snap, but Fleming fields it beautifully. He got the ball slightly off the side of the foot, but it's going to take a Husky roll. They're going to let it bounce down to the 25, across the 20, down just shy of the 15, and the market of the 17-yard line. And Fleming got a beautiful roll on that football. BYU. 
will take possession with no score. We'll be back in a moment. No score yet. 8-11 to go in the first quarter. Both teams trying to feel each other out here. It's interesting. Ronnie Jenkins hasn't yet carried the football. And the Huskies, who figured to pass, just be pass happy this afternoon, have allowed Maurice Shaw to carry it six times for 15 yards. Here's a handoff to Sataki. The big man rumbling up right side for a gainer of about eight yards. And that's the most production we've seen from either offensive unit so far this afternoon. Jeremiah Farms with the tackle. And Butler in there to team as well for the dogs. Number 34, Sataki's 240 pounds. A little cutback right here. Good blocking on Lester at the point of attack. Todd Johnson with a missed tackle, however, allows him to pick up about five to seven more yards. Two receivers in the eye for BYU. Wide outs to the left. And a single man split out to the right-hand side. Federick. Back to throw, guns it out here for the first down and more, slipping on the turf down at the 31 yard line after making the catch down there. Was one of the big tight ends. Tafita off a hangaway. Tight ends for BYU, they've had a few. In fact, there's a Seahawk, a Tula Mealy, that uh, tore up the Huskies here one year, about two years ago. Sky starting to brighten here at Husky Stadium. BYU first and 10. Ball resting at their own 31. Federick quick drop. Looking left side. Guns it out here to the near sideline. And the catch made at about the 35-yard line down there. By margin hooks. Pick up a four. Hooks out of Waco, Texas. A senior this year. Federick so far this afternoon. Two for four and Brock Ewart three for seven through the air. Federick on a second and six deal sends a man in motion behind him off to the right side. Turns hands off Jenkins trying to cut up and knock down. Tackle down around the ankles. In his own backfield he was able to sprawl ahead for pickup of a couple Jeremiah Farms with the stop. Well, we talked about that in the pregame. Guys like Jeremiah Farms, they need to step up and make the plays. Sophomore really getting a lot of action this year. They didn't know where to play him in the last couple years. Is he a middle backer, outside backer? Well, they found the spot replacing Jason Chorak at that rush side. Third and six for BYU. No score yet. And Federick wants a timeout. Yeah, he called it quickly. What, what do you suppose he saw there, Sonny? Well, obviously not all the players understood what the play was going to be called. And when we come back, Cougar football with no score and six and a half minutes to play in the first period from Huskyville. It'll be interesting to see what team BYU, what offense they come with this afternoon against Washington. Total yards 22, Washington 30 yards total. BYU's Ronnie Jenkins has had just one carry for no gain after coming off a 171 yard performance and getting the ball 30 times on the ground against ASU. Paterek back to throw, man wide open, he dropped the football. Brendan Jones was about 10 yards away. He was the closest to the intended receiver down there for BYU. Carlos Nuno was wide open off to the near side. Good play action by Kevin Federick this time. And you're right, Kevin, wide open. Although the ball was thrown behind him, receiver has to turn all the way around. And when you're a big guy like that as a tight end, it's a really a tough catch. So BYU must punt the football. 
When I say which BYU team will we see, keep in mind Federick against Alabama when they scored 31 points was 19 of 30. Here's the punt and fielded by Jarzinka. And the little man got his head down into his shell before he was knocked down at the 26-yard line. Schiffler. <laughs> Looks like Steve Scheffler on that play. Man, he came rumbling down there and and little Joe just got his head down quickly. Well, he doesn't have to take it down too far because he's not real tall. But right here, good timing by little Joe right there. You kind of thought he was going to call fair catch. Of course, he doesn't, and he doesn't really have a habit of doing that. But uh, the Huskies need to get on track here a little bit. They've had two series now where they've got to look at that BYU defense. They're not playing a nickel package. Do some good things. Throw underneath. Get your Reggie, the tight end, involved. Double wideouts left, and here flanked to the near side is Hooker. And Brock Ewart now will bring Shaw for the H-back position off to the right side. Quick drop, slants a pass over to Hooker, trying to beat a man in the open field. And he took it right to the help of the defense. He faked sideline and then went middle right into the help defense. Gray was there to kind of stand up Hooker and keep him contained. I'll tell you, Jawarren Hooker, it's a great catch. Number four, one thing the little speedsters like that want to do, though, you don't want to go back inside where big guys can knock your head off. That time you got... Byron Frisch, 93, dropping back to help on the tackle. Flank to the left side is Harrison Jarzinka. And Hooker to the near side. Shaw again will step up off to the side. Will take the ball, go right to left, and try to scoot down the left side. He's able to spin across the 36-yard line. And Shaw's been busy this afternoon, six for 15. Pat Conniff has had a carry for three yards, but Shaw's been the exclusive man. Jason Harris had a knee problem developed this week that uh, apparently was uh, agitated in practice. It was uh, it was uh, an ailing knee that uh, went back to that Tempe game when he was spilled. Kind of developed late last week. So we won't see Harris at all today. Conniff is in the lineup again, and he and Shaw in the backfield. Conniff the H-back. Here's Ewart, fake handoff, and that ball was incomplete to Conniff, and Brock Ewart is spilled out at the 20-yard line, wrestled down in a flag on the play already this afternoon. BYU has been guilty of rushing, of uh, roughing the passer, and that's what looks like uh, is going to push the Huskies into a first down situation here. Derek Stevenson came back there to wrestle Brock to the ground. Well, he's just rushing hard right here. And to me, well, right there, a little late. He, he could have let go, but he stayed with it. And I'll tell you, Lavelle Edwards is not happy with it, but if he has to see that again, he knows that it wasn't continuation. What happened was 54, Derek Stevenson knew the ball was gone, Kevin, but he stayed with it and happened to throw him down. He had no reason to do that. He'd have been better off just to go ahead and nail him the first time and get it over with. <laughs> well, the Huskies have had a couple of first downs, both by penalty. And BYU, the third penalty, and 35 yards assessed in total against them today. You're at his own 50. Quick drop, throws over the middle, ball deflected, intercepted, and to his own 40, up to the 45 yard line, scampers the corner, Jason Walker. Walker grabs a deflection, and BYU's in business at near midfield. Not a very good throw right there by Brock throwing into a lot of traffic. And you throw in the middle and a lot of traffic like that with deflections, anything can happen. Big time interception, Jason Walker, senior for BYU. That's what they're supposed to do, Kevin. The free safety's back there looking for deflections. Guys come across the middle. Brock, a little bit of a bad read on that play. You're at this afternoon, four of nine, and doesn't appear to be in any kind of rhythm. Here's Federick now in the shotgun. Back to throw, going to arc one high. The left-hander has a man open downfield, but knocked down. The ball deflected and clearly interference. Jermaine Smith was down there. While the ball was in the air, he and Margin Hooks got tangled up. And this will be interference. And BYU strikes deep into Husky territory. Well, it's all you see it all the time. Teams after a... Well, I was waiting for the call right there, Kevin, but usually what happens after a big turnover, you see it 100 times every year, 
The other team will come back and go for it deep right here. They elect to do that to margin hooks, but Jermaine Smith was all over him, went for the ball, but unfortunately made contact. JD had a little tough ending down there at ASU, so he needs to pull it together here, Kevin, and play tight coverage, but don't commit those uh, penalties. Ball resting at the Husky 40-yard line for BYU. Federick fakes the handoff, hard rush, rolls out, slings a beautiful sidearm pass out onto the flat. The catch made out there by Kalani Shitake and a nice open field tackle applied by Marcus Harrison of Washington. Marcus Harrison out in coverage on Sataki right there, but right here, pressure from the left side. Good play action again by Federick. Jeremiah Farms laying the helmet on him. Good thing that Marcus Harrison, that's from experience, because I saw as he, after that play, he did limp back to the huddle a little bit. He's not 100%. Ball resting at the far hash mark for BYU. Second and six, no score in the first period, and a flag just as Federick steps back from center. Well, this first quarter has been marred by penalties on both sides. Well, you know, this is still the BYU team of old. They've been throwing the ball quite a bit today, albeit from play action. Right of the snap. Ball starts by the offense. Five yards Ball start on BYU, the, the call. You know, a lot of times, Kevin, that'll work for you. You see that a running back runs for over 170 yards the next week. The opposing defense wants to try and shut that phase of the game out. The Huskies coaching staff, I'm sure, looked at that. Consequently, they're doing a lot of play action the day off Ronnie Jenkins. LaBelle Edwards going back to the air this afternoon. This is the type of club that played down in Tuscaloosa, Alabama two weekends ago. A team that was throwing the ball in the air. Ronnie Jenkins came down with some cramps, only had six carries. Back to throw, double pump. Receiver was open. It was Jenkins juggles the football, and the ball was in the air and nearly intercepted. Johnson down there thought he could get his hands on it, unable to do so. Todd Johnson in coverage. But Ronnie Jenkins trying to get the football via the air this time. Well, you see, Federick has to double pump because he's waiting for him to get open so he can throw him the ball. Excellent job. He should have caught the ball, although the Huskies were in position to make the tackle down there. Butler and Townsend Johnson all around the football and the receiver. Federick, third and 11 in the shotgun. BYU's 0 for 2 in third down situations, and Federick guns one out here to the 35. Complete, but immediately tackled down there, and a big hit by Mighty Mouse. Nigel Burton with the stop on Aaron Roderick, the receiver. Coming in the ball game, Kevin. BYU has only been successful on 35% of their third down plays, and so far today they're staying in line with that. Federick looking all the way to his left side. You know, he didn't look off the receiver one time. Nigel Burton able in one -up man coverage out there to stay with Roderick and make the nice tackle. 2.50 to go in the first quarter, and it's <laughs> Owen Potchman from Mercer Island. They're going to go for a 51-yard attempt, and Owen gets under. He boots it. It is long enough, but it is wide. So BYU tees it up, looking to score early and to come away with nothing. And the Huskies will have the football as we, with no score, have two and a half minutes to play in the first period. No score yet, and the Huskies offense has had some trouble. Not a lot of rhythm out there. I, I wonder how much of this you can attribute to the fact that Dean Looker is not out on the field. Here's the handoff. Oh, an attempted draw play, but that one sniffed out. And the intended uh, ball carrier, Willie Hurst, knocked down. Willie got the football. The freshman from Compton was knocked down immediately. That's his first carry of the afternoon. Well, he's going to remember that, and he's going to know that uh, when you get to this level, a year ago you're playing high school ball. They don't see too many guys like 93, 93 Byron Frisch. Jarzinka and Hooker wide to the left side and trips here to the near side. Husky second and 12. You're trying to establish some rhythm. Backpedaling, throwing out here, pass complete. 
to the 40-yard line, across to the 41. Chris Jergens, a freshman, with the catch and the carry, and Brian Gray up to make the stop. Now, Jergens didn't play, didn't make a catch in Tempe two weeks ago. Now, as a quarterback, Sonny, how, how much of that plays into that trying to get a rhythm, the familiarity with your receivers? Because after all, Brock doesn't have a lot of familiarity other than practice with a lot of these players. Well, you know, they, you draw them up on paper, but everybody has their own way of running it. If it says five yards and break a certain way, everybody does it differently. It takes <laughs> some time. Third and four now for Washington. They were so good in third down situations at Arizona State. Brock, quick step. Rolls out wide left side. Flag goes down. Gerald Harris was tripped up before the ball got there. Robertson, one of the new cornerbacks, appears to be the guilty party down there. Just a quick step drop again. We're going to see it all day. One, two, three. Deliver the ball. Hashi Robertson, however, it delivered the blow <laughs> to Gerald Harris. First down at the spot of the foul. One thing that's happened is BYU a few times a day have really passed, you know, roughing the passer penalties against Brock Heward. When he's delivering the football, they're hitting him hard. And I know, you know, who knows? As this game wears on, even though you're 6'5", 225, it's going to pay on you a little bit. But you need big plays, and you need help from penalties. Harris flanked out to the right side. It's Hooker on the left side. You were it again. A three-step drop. Angles a pass over here to the near side and over through Jurgens and under through Gerald Harris. The ball thrown out in an area between the receivers. Hey, obviously the game plan of BYU is they're going to come out and they feel the best offensive weapon that Washington has, obviously, is Brock Heward, and they're going to get some helmets on him. You come into this defensive quarter and say, I don't care what happens, you get a helmet on that quarterback, and uh, Rob Morris that time really took it to task. Morris from nearby Nampa, Idaho, weighs 250 pounds, and Brock got it right in the sternum, but appears to be all right. Here he comes, second and 10 to the line. And the ball resting at the Husky 48-yard line. Brock back to throw angles, a pass high to the air as a man open. Jerkins with a reception, 20, 15, 10, 5, 4, he's in! Touchdown, Washington! Chris Jurgens breaks away along the far sideline and Brock Hewitt throw duty. How about that, Sonny? I love it. Great job, one-on-one -on -one outside. You take all those hits and you get that young freshman, 89, out there, Chris Jurgens. He's also a big receiver and real good speed. Brock Hewitt just laying it out perfect. That's Picture perfect right there. Outside shoulder and Chris Jurgens out racing everybody. Jurgens from Olympia, Washington. The freshman will remember this one for some time. The Huskies season opener. And he's on the receiving end of a Ewart touchdown pass. But the extra point is wide. And the Huskies lead it 6 0 with 55 seconds left in the first period. We'll be back in a moment. Well, one thing about the Huskies that will make them deadly this year is their unpredictable nature on the offense. Here's Chris Jurgens, who didn't get a whiff of that leather two weekends ago, but he's been the main man here early. Well, what happens, they're blitzing again. As we mentioned, they're going to come after Brock Heward with a lot of people. That frees them up man-on-man -man outside, and Chris Jurgens, even if he's a freshman, can can really run. 6-3 out of Olympia. Here's a kick that wobbles down to the 5. BYU man in the open, jitterbugging, going to bounce outside, take it in at the 30-yard line. Down there receiving the football for BYU and making a pretty nice open field maneuver to get some uh, room is Jason Anderson. Skirsky missed the extra point, but the kickoff was a nice deep one down there that Anderson was able to move up to the 31-yard line. That's where BYU gets busy, trailing 6-0. You saw Chris Jurgens right there, Kevin. Now he feels like he really is a part of that team and a part of that huddle once you get your first touchdown. Federick with a man in motion right to left. Dragged down and a sack at the 22-yard line. 
Jabari Issa breaks through to drag Federick down. And while BYU has a solid offensive line, they do have some gaps. They have given up a number of sacks already this year. Well, they've got two men on the line of scrimmage that are fairly new. Take a look right here at the middle. 66, Jimmy Richards, and 62, Matt Johnson. Both of them have <laughs> been around, but they haven't played very much. You saw right there a little bit of, Finger. hey, who was supposed to block him? Finger pointing. <laughs> that BYU team has given up now nine sacks over the last three games. Here's a delay, and it's sniffed down, and back behind the line of scrimmage again. The Washington defense attacks, and Lester Towns is there to make the stop on Sitaki before he could get to the line of scrimmage. So it's second, make that uh, second and 20 for BYU. Lester, it's good to have him back. He's worked real hard. He's a co-captain, one of the two juniors. He and Brock Heward as captains this year. Staying right in the hole. Nobody getting a block on him. Easy to make the tackle. The first quarter comes to an end with the Washington Huskies leading BYU six to nothing. As they change ends, we'll step away and return in a moment. Back at Husky Stadium with Sonny Six Killer, Kevin Calabro. The Washington Huskies are off to a 6 0 lead on the BYU Cougars. Brock Hewitt with a 52 yard hookup to Chris Jurgens, the freshman from Olympia, Washington. The difference in this game. Third down and 20 for this man, Kevin Federick. Federick rolling out to his right. He's a left hander. Stops, pumps. Feeds it down the field to the 39-yard line. And spinning and tumbling to the stadium turf with a catch. Off a hangaway. The big tight end from Hawaii. 6'3 and 250 with good hands. You don't see Federick uh, stay in the pocket too much. He's always going to roll out or play action pass. Get him out so he can wind up and throw the ball like that. Unfortunately, good, pretty good coverage, but Opa wing the way. Good catch, couldn't keep his feet. Shy of the first down by a couple of yards, and BYU forced to kick the ball away now. Jarzinka back to field at his own 25. Has a man in front of him. He's going to cut to his left, and he's <laughs> shoe tackle down there. His foot gear came off. Well, somebody's foot gear came off. He's knocked down. That's Jurgens putting the shoe back. Look at Jurgens catch the touchdown pass. He's back on the specialty team. Back there to block for little Joe. So it'll be Husky football. Washington leading 6 nothing when we come back. The Huskies lead the Cougars 6 0 here in this second quarter of play. And this has been quite a series between the two schools. This week's game marks the fifth game in the series between the Huskies and BYU. Let's go back to 1986 here at Husky Stadium when the Dogs crushed the Cougars. LaBelle Edwards, the coach then, the coach now. Edwards now in his 27th year. and. We should make mention that he is now eighth on the all-time Division I winners list with 235 career wins. Moved past Bo Beckley last weekend. He needs just four wins to move past Woody Hayes. He is third among active coaches. Joe Pa, Joe Paterno, and Bobby Bowden, the two ahead of him. He's done a, a marvelous job for years. I Provo. think he looks like Spencer Tracy myself. <laughs> Back to throw, Ewart. Zings one out here right side. Willie Hurst on his horse. 30, cut back, 35, spinning. Knocked down at the 40-yard line. Here's Willie Hurst showing the speed <laughs> that has excited a lot of people, Sonny, around the Husky camp. Well, everybody's been trying to get him out there so he can, we can see some of that action. 
good play, good way to get him involved in the offense. First time he touched the ball, he got tackled for a one-yard loss. This time, get him in the open field and let him do his thing. Good blocking downfield. Big block on Rob Morris, number 44. Couldn't quite see the number, but that was a great block. Jarzinka and Harris, wide left side. Here's Willie Hurst, who was a point guard at his high school, Dominguez Hills in Compton, California. He's the back with the ball, scooting left side, spinning away from a tackler, and angling his way, giving up the body to the 49, uh, make that the 44-yard uh, line. Bri Brad Martin with a stop on Willie Hurst. Willie Hurst, number one, going to veer off to the left side. You see the line blocking up front. Anthony Meisen, I believe, the tight end, 81, getting a little block. Willie Hurst will do those spin moves, Kevin. He likes to do that little shake and bake and a little bit of that spin, but he does have the speed to go with it. Chris Jergens, man in motion. Couple of freshmen, true freshmen, Hurst and Jergens. Right now, key figures in the Huskies. Offensive plans with 13 minutes left here in the second period. Brock back to throw, simply stumbled, fell to the stadium turf, and is touched at his own 39-yard line. He apparently okay. tripped up on the... Uh, now look at this Kevin you'll see him it's the old thing with the quarterback is as you're pulling out your big center sometimes will take that step back and granted the BYU offense our defense has really been coming after him but this time is Tony Coates is all-american right guard stepping back but I don't blame him. he has to block Darren Yancey number 97 that's been real active for BYU Huskies third and nine now Willie Hurst is the lone back and Marcus Tuyasa Sopo is the quarterback. Look for the quarterback draw. They're going to run the option left side. Marcus going to keep a step by tackle 50, 40, down to the 30, down to the 20. He is inside the 15 yard line. Marcus Tuyasa Sopo options left side, third and long for the Huskies, and they turn it into a long game. What a play! Oh, the man's got wheels. He's got steps, honey. Uh, he's got talent, just plain talent. You watch it right here. You got to play good block on the corner, though. But Marcus has the speed to get up into the field. And you got Willie Hurst outside they got to pay attention to. We saw it against ASU. Big 16-yard run for first down. Again, Marcus back with a big run here. 46 yards in total for this man uh, from Woodenville High School. Now here is Ewart, hand off to Hurst, trying to go right side, bounces away from a tackler, cuts back in traffic, muscles ahead to about the 13-yard line. He's a tough kid to bring down. He's so low to the ground, 5'10 and 200 pounds. This freshman from Compton, California, Byron Frisch with a stop for BYU. Well, they call him a young Barry Sanders, and I'm not quite sure if he meets that, but I tell you what, the kid, you can just tell from the few plays we've seen so far, He's got talent. You talked about the young kids playing. You get Willie Hurst out there, Chris Jurgens out there. All these young guys, you have to play them. They've got the ability to play. Jawarren Hooker wide left. It is Harrison Jarzinka off to the right side. And Willie's the H back. Back to throw Ewart. Post pattern left side. Intended receiver Hooker overthrew him. In tight coverage down there and doing a marvelous job was Robertson. Hashi Robertson, one of those JUCO transfers from Long Beach, California. Well, we said it earlier that the cornerbacks are junior college transfers for BYU. But right there, he stuck really close to Jorn Hooker. And Brock Hewitt on that throw, as you know, the speed of your wide receiver in the limited area, he put a lot of mustard in that ball and had to be a perfect pass. Unfortunately, he, lead, he led him too far. Third and nine now for the Washington Huskies. They lead it 6-0. I think I'd be looking for Reggie Davis. Trips to the right, including Reggie Davis. Jurgens is over there as well. Quick snap throw over the middle. It's Reggie Davis to the 10, trying to work his way across the 10 and does. Down to about the eight yard line. Shy of the first down, however. Chris Ellison with the stop. They brought Reggie from the far side on the crossing pattern and he was unable to get the yardage needed. So the kicking team is on. And Jim Skirsky has already missed an extra point this afternoon is on looking for his first field goal in his career here in Washington. Well, right there, you've got Chris Ellison, who is probably the leader of that defensive backfield all over Reggie Davis. This will be about a 25-yarder. Here's the snap, the hold, and the kick is up. Man, it's no good. Wide. So the Huskies come away with nothing on that one, and the key 
to the drive, the 46-yard option pass on a third and long from this man from Woodenville, Marcus Tuyasu Sopo. Huskies lead the Cougars of BYU 6-0. Back in a moment. Well, Brock here, it's had quite an afternoon. He's been knocked down six times. He has, however, hooked up with Chris Jurgens on a TD reception. And it's 6 0 Washington. Husky football, first and 10. Hand off to Willie Hurst. And that quick, elusive back muscles his way across to the 42 yard line. Sonny, we talked about it earlier. Willie Hurst in comparison to Napoleon Kaufman. You saw Kaufman play every down here in Washington. Are there any comparisons at all? Uh, any similarities in their game? Well, I think Willie Hurst is more of a, um, like we talked about it, a little shake and bake, a little, uh, got all the moves of a Barry Sanders, a twist, and he loves to twist and turn, make guys miss him. Napoleon Kaufman flat had flat out speed, and he could just burn people. I've never seen a back at Washington as fast as uh, Napoleon Kaufman. Brock back to throw, three-step drop, angles a pass, caught at the 50-yard line. Gerald Harris trying to circle away from defenders, actually took the ball back to his own 48-yard line where he slipped and then was knocked down. And I think he's going to be shy of the first down. It'll be very close. I don't think Gerald Harris knew exactly how to react on this catch. He was wide open. It was a good throw by Brock Heward. But you see here after he catches, he's a little off balance. He puts his arm down, and he doesn't know why... And you see other jerseys coming at you, Kevin. You're not quite sure what you should do. What you should do is just turn around and go straight upfield and get up as many yards as you can. Fortunately, he was still able to pick up the first down. At this point, you want to go west, young man. Huskies are heading toward the west end of the stadium right now. They're, they're in business. First down. Harris apparently had enough. He extended that long, lanky frame, and it keeps the drive alive with six and a half minutes to go in the first half. I like what they're doing though, Kevin. They're mixing up. They bring in Willie Hurst, bring a little bit more explosiveness to the offense, a little bit more quick passes. It opens up the passing game, which they hadn't had open early. Give Maury Shaw a breather too. He's already had seven carries for 18 yards this afternoon. And Jason Harris out with a banged up knee is not available. You are quick snap throw over the middle. It's Jurgens with a reception. He's across the 40 yard line of BYU for another first down. The 6 3 tight end from Olympia on the hookup from Brock Ewart. Rob Warcup makes the stop for the Cougars. Warcup is the nickel back that BYU likes to bring in on this type of package. Brock Hewer just going up, reading the break. Warcup, where is he playing? Is he playing the outside shade a little bit of Chris Jurgens? And Jurgens taking over for Dane Looker in that little inside position today. Looker had the 11 receptions at Tempe two weekends ago, and Jurgens this afternoon has gathered in three catches for 73 yards and a TD. Here's Ewart. He's going to hand off. And there was Willie Hurst, but running right into the tail end of one of his down linemen. Rob Morris was there to push the offensive line back into Willie Hurst. I catch the number on this truck that runs into Willie. <laughs> Brock Hewart making sure he's in the right position to get the handoff to begin with. But you see 44 coming through right there. Tony Coates having a tough time because BYU will blitz about 25 30 percent of the time in midfield Washington second and 14 you in the shotgun trying to loop one off to the right side and he just flat under through that football I, I wonder if that ball scored out of his hands no I think that Brock Heward right there just basically threw the ball away in a legal manner mm -hmm. close to a receiver because nobody was open downfield and he's starting to get a little bit of pressure. Maybe that's a little sign of being racked earlier in the game in the first quarter where he got two penalties against BYU roughing the passer and he got nicked a couple times and you know even though you're you've been around for a while you'd still get rid of the football. 
9 of 17 this afternoon is Brock Hewitt. And Marcus Tuyas Sopo comes in for Washington third and 14. Long third down situation, and the Huskies unload with trips to the left. Wide receivers to the right, and Marcus was in shotgun formation when he called a timeout. We'll come back to see what the Huskies unleash on third and 14, leading 6 0 in a moment. All right, third and 14 for the Huskies. The ball resting on their own 44, and it's Ewart in shotgun formation. Angles a pass into the backfield of BYU, and it's intercepted. Picked off at about the 25 and run up to the 30 before being chopped down was Jason Walker. Brock Ewart picked off for the second time this afternoon. It's interesting, coming into this game, he had attempted 89 passes without interception, but picked off twice here in this ball game, and a deep ball that just got away. He's throwing the ball down the middle like I've never seen him throw before. And you've got a guy playing center field, Jason Walker. He's a senior. He's been around a long time. And you know in that conference that they play in, he sees a lot of passing teams. Second turnover of the afternoon for Washington. BYU goes to work. Federick, hand off right side of Ronnie Jenkins, angling out here to the 35 and finally breaking out and showing some of that speed in which he was uh, able to use against the ASU. He garnered 171 yards in that afternoon. Hakeem Akbar, one, uh, another freshman <laughs> on the field for the Huskies. Another true freshman on the field for the, for the Huskies. I love the way you said that, but it's true. There are so many young people playing for the University of Washington, and Hakeem Akbar is a very good safety coming up here, and that's why he's playing. Akbar out of Riverside, California, 6'1 and 195 from the safety position. Here's Federick. The handoff, ball knocked down, it's free, grabbed by Butler, 25-20, spins 15, 10, still on his feet, five, dives to the end zone, oh. touchdown Washington, <laughs> tremendous play, a gritty effort by Butler, who gobbled up the fumble and went down the near sideline. How about that? You like that six? Well, I love it for a lot of reasons, number one, and... It, it, the Huskies needed a big turnover at that time, and I've seen Teray Butler play for so many years from Richmond Junior Football with my son. It's good to see him score. <laughs> right here, Ronnie Jenkins looking, his eyeballs popped up because a backer was blitzing from Washington, coughed up the ball because he didn't keep his eyes on it. Right here, a great move by Teray Butler and great job of getting it in the end zone. Well, I did not catch the number of the man who was able to get into the backfield and make the first stop on Jenkins, but he did a magnificent job back there upending Ronnie Jenkins. 35-yard fumble return for the touchdown. Jury Butler, now watch the, watch the stop on Jenkins. This is a great bit of tackling. Look to the left side, Kevin. We'll see a backer coming in. And I believe it was Todd Johnson on the weak side coming on a blitz that Ronnie Jenkins forced his eyeballs up because he knew he was going to take a lick and coughs it up right here for Teray Butler to get it in the end zone. That was just a fantastic move along the sideline. Johnson with the shoulder square came right under Ronnie Jenkins. Man, he had him sealed off. Was able to pop him into the air and he lost the football. So now Washington talking it over. They lead here 12 nothing, and they've yet to make a decision on that extra point. My guess is they'll go go to the ground. Skirsky's well, had a rough afternoon already. He's missed an extra point and missed a, albeit a long one, a, a field goal attempt. Well, you feel bad for Jim Skirsky as well. He went to a day here in Seattle, kid, and uh, maybe sometimes uh, first start at home puts a little pressure. You know those kickers, they've got pressure on them all the time anyway. Huskies are going to try to put 14 on the board here as Ewart will roll out to his left looking to throw angles it toward the post and it's two points for Washington as Hooker makes a tremendous 
leaping grab at the post. But a man is down, and it's Brock Hewitt writhing on the turf. He says he's all right. They all say that, though, don't they? He has been knocked down about a half dozen times this afternoon. He took a shot there was, as he was rolling out. Might have got the wind knocked out of him. He had to wait till the very last minute. No one was open early on his play, and you're rolling out to the near side. You've got a lot of pressure coming. You've got the middle linebacker, Rob Morris, and it looks to me where his helmet was and the way Brock would have landed that he probably knocked the wind out of him. Great catch, however, by Jawarn Hooker in the corner. It's just the one foot for the two-point conversion, and he got it beautifully done. Watch right here. Morris, helmet, boom, wind gone. Great job right there by Jawarn Hooker. The official, first of all, called it no good, looked down, saw his foot hit cleanly, and called it good. So the Huskies lead 14-0 as Brock Hewitt once again gives up his body to deliver a beautifully thrown ball. And the Huskies lead 14-0. We'll be back in a moment. So Washington leads BYU 14-0 after the two-point conversion. The pass complete from Ewart to Hooker. Skirsky gets her foot into this one. And this one wobbles low, fielded at the five. Little fake reserve reverse on the kickoff. Up to the 40, bouncing to the 45-yard line, and finally slung down to the turf. I believe it was Roderick, the man grabbing the football for BYU. Looked like Jim Skursky was in to help on the tackle. Take a look at Brock Hewitt. He's okay. He's telling his teammates right there. Of course, he's sitting to his fellow co-captain, Reggie Davis. Look at those total yards, Kevin. Washington with 185 total yards, and BYU held a 55. Washington leading 14-0. 3.54 left in the first half. Federick goes to work near hash mark. Wide outs left and right. Drops back to pass, and he is tripped up by his own man. Kevin Federick, the quarterback for BYU. Back to throw. Hard rush. Scrambles out of the pocket, 45-50. Collard detained, and then Nigel Burton just spun him around with a hard shot. Jabari Issa just kind of Hung him out on a string, and Burton went in there and looped him like he would a pinata. Well, I was watching in the middle that time, Kevin, and you've got Jabari Isi who's kind of lining up off angle. He didn't get a chance to see it there, but they're double. First of all, they're triple blocking him, then double teaming him. Able to get out and get a collar there, and Nigel Burton assisting. <laughs> Man. He's going to feel that one tomorrow. Jabari, Jabari just kind of stood him up and let Nigel take a shot at him. Third and five for Federick. Little man back to throw. The left-hander wheels it outside of Ronnie Jenkins. He drops another ball. But Washington done it, has done a marvelous job on Jenkins. They've not allowed him into any kind of rhythm. And Hunt Sunday, they've had him thinking, constantly looking away from the football, looking to see where the next shot's coming from. Well, see right there, Kevin Federick saying, Ronnie, you got to come back to me. And Ronnie's going, you got to give me a chance to come out of my route. Kevin Federick absolutely had no time to throw the football. Washington was coming after him. And of course, when he has to get rid of it early, the receiver doesn't have enough time to collect himself. Hartsfield is the punter. He's already boomed a 59 yarder this year, and he wobbles this one high into the air. And Jury Butler down at his 25 will make the catch. And look at BYU's coverage. Six men around him, and they knock him flatter to pancake down at about the 11 yard line. 14-0 Huskies lead, 2.17 left in the first half of play. And we'll see, uh, we'll see Brock Hewitt presumably back out on the turf. Now, just a moment ago on the two-point conversion, 
He took what was, by my estimate, Sonny, about the seventh lick, real good shot he's taken this afternoon, and he is back out on the field. And he'll bring the offensive unit down here to their own. Now yeah, they're going to set up at their own 13-yard line. Todd Elstrom is in for his first look this afternoon at a wideout. Delay, handoff first, bouncing right side, cutting back 15. Straight arming, carrying five tacklers out of bounds with him. <laughs> the 13-yard line. Willie Hurst will not go down. Chris Ellison finally pushes him all the way to the track. He was running it out. It's a little tough, even as a defender coming out there. One thing I like about Willie Hurst, right there, you saw it, Kevin. Watch his legs. Don't look at the defender, the blockers, anybody. Just watch those legs. They keep moving. They don't stop. Right there, they're always jitterbugging. They're moving somewhere. And he's not allowing BYU to get a clean grab or a clean hit on him. Harris is wide to the left side with Jarzinka. Reggie Davis, the tight end. Off to the right side, Todd Elstrom. And once again, it's Hurst, the lone back. Ewart pumps, delivers, wheeling outside of Gerald Harris. Gerald at the 22-yard line, I think, has the first down. Very close. It's a great grab. Brock had all kinds of time. BYU elected not to blitz on that opportunity. Look at him laugh with Gerald Harris. Now here's a guy that got his bell rung, his ribs racked, and everything <laughs> else, and he still get a smile on his face. Brock knows where he's going. He already made a read right there. He knows he's going outside. Pump, boom, deliver the football. And Gerald Harris with a good catch, even with a man on him. Gerald Harris, so uh, Sonny talked about on the opening, one of the receivers that's going to have to pick it up this afternoon. Of course, they've they've gotten some some great contributions from other folks. Chris Jurgens, three catches, 73 yards. Warren Moon looking on. And he's indicating that the Huskies need just a few inches here for the first down. It's third and about one for Washington. Yep, third and just mere inches for the Huskies. So here is York with the clock running, 117 showing, third and about six inches. Going to roll out, hand off to Willie Hurst. Oh, he avoids a tackler in the backfield, but then sprawls ahead and is knocked down, shy of the first down, it appears. Derek Stevenson makes a tremendous tackle on Willie Hurst. Boy, nobody touched him. Stevenson just shed the block of Aaron Dalen. So the Huskies lead 14 nothing and now Washington in a fourth down situation but they actually lost a couple of yards on the play. Well you wonder about it Kevin you, you have a speed guy in there Willie Hurst you have a one back set you need third and an inch you got a big fullback on the bench and Pat Conniff if you got a big quarterback 225 pounds what's wrong with a sneak or a straight ahead play. I never agree with going wide on something like that even if you've got the speed. And also, Maurice Shaw, where has he been here in the second period? We have no uh, report of any injury on Maurice. He had seven carries and 18 yards, and he's more of the back that's been consistent up the middle, six feet. That's about 15, 20 pounds more on a guy like Willie Hurst. So the uh, Huskies elect to kick the football away. Ryan Fleming back at his own six-yard line. Washington leading 14-0 with a minute two left here in the first half, and you cannot allow... Something strange to happen here. Fleming gets the ball away beautifully, and he arcs a high one into the air. The spiral down to the 30, takes a kick, and there's Reggie Davis together it in and down it at the 30-yard line of BYU. That is a tremendous kick from Ryan Fleming. Outstanding boot. We'll be back to finish this first half. Huskies leading 14-0 in a moment.
Well, a 49-yard kick estimated at 48 by some people up here in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> but a, a beauty nonetheless by Ryan Fleming to back BYU to the 30-yard line. Federick to take over. The left-hander steps up, delivers a bomb out here to the near side. Trying to throw nearly the width of the field. The ball is short and incomplete. The intended receiver is Ben Horton. Now, conversely for BYU, Lavelle Edwards, I think, wants to reel it in a little bit here. He's only down two touchdowns at half. And the one thing they haven't done, BYU offense, they haven't pounded the ball with Ronnie Jenkins, which we all expected coming yep. into the ballgame. Jenkins this afternoon has carried just four times per yard. Federick back to throw hard rush over the middle. Delivers the goods. Ronnie Jenkins with a football, leaning forward to the 40-yard line. He's shy of the first down by maybe inches. Uh, I think they're going to have to measure this. Jeremiah Farms in pursuit brought him down from behind. Jenkins is not a big guy, as we've mentioned. 180 pounds, maybe. Well, on the left, he's got pressure. You see Federick right there. Ronnie Jenkins is one of those backs that will release out of the backfield. Federick now is hit, but is able to fling the ball ahead to Jenkins, who tumbles free to the 43-yard line before being knocked down by Todd Johnson. Seems like they've gone to the offensive belief that we'll have Federick throw the ball to Ronnie Jenkins. They've, they've tried it unsuccessfully in the flat. Now they're throwing it to him in a little roll routes in the middle. Federick in the shotgun, six seconds, five. Federick back to throw in a flag, halts play. Motion on the offense, possibly Sonny. Prior to the snap, yeah, it looks like by the offense. Joe Wong, the tackle to the near side. When you're in that little hurry up offense, tends to get his little motor running a little quickly. So first and 15 for BYU, but time has run off the clock, and that ends the first half of play. The Washington Huskies lead at the Brigham Young University Cougars by a score of 14 to nothing in the Huskies home opener. We'll be back in just a moment. Kevin Federick to get things started now for BYU as we begin the second half. Federick back to throw over the middle, and the pass dropped. Ronnie Jenkins has had a devil of a time today handling the football. He's had at least three drops by my estimation. Well, the other ones seem to be where he, the ball was delivered to him a little early because of defensive pressure. That time, Federick had all day to throw the football, and consequently, he got it out there. But one thing, even though he's a running back, you don't catch the ball in your shoulder pads. You catch it in your hands. Federick was 18 of 14 in the first half for 62 yards through the air. Ronnie Jenkins did have three catches, but he's dropped a few more. Here's the handoff to Jenkins. Right side, going to scoot around in. Gets a block downfield to the 50. Tried to bounce outside and did to about the 49-yard line of the Huskies. Running him finally out of bounds was Butler coming up from the corner position. Ray Butler on the stop. Well, here's his speed right here. Great blocking up front. Jeremiah Farms, Nigel Burton taken out of the play. And Ronnie Jenkins just turning it on right there. Jenkins had just four carries in the first half for negative one net yards. First rushing, first down of the afternoon for BYU. Federick back to throw at his own 45. Flings it out to the right side. The pass complete. Turi Butler there to push the receiver. Margin hooks out of bounds. Well, BYU now starting to march. BYU knows they need to throw the ball downfield. They're going against the young man, Teray Butler, to the, to the far side. Federick seems to plant his foot and throw better to his right side, being a left-hander, than he does to his own side. First and 10 for BYU. 
The ball at the Husky 38 yard line. Fenerick back, the left hander, five step drop, hard rush, scrambles deep into the pocket, throws it out here. Down it's to the five yard line and caught at the three. An outstanding grab down there. Made by Aaron Roderick before he's hauled down by Tory Butler. And Federick with a tremendous delivery of that ball as he was scrambling. He stepped forward in the pocket. Well, Aaron Roderick's been around the program a long time. You look at the right there, just kind of a soft four man rush. The old line taking it, doing a great job of keeping him out. Here's Jenkins spinning away from a tackler, trying to lean ahead, but knocked down Jabari Issa there along with Brendan Jones. And Lester Towns making the initial stop on the spinning Ronnie Jenkins. Defense has to step it up a little bit. When you're playing BYU, you really can't play a lot of four-man rush and play that zone. It gives them too much time with the man Teray Butler was on. Way too much time for Federick to throw. On Second. that play, Lester Towns was there. Second five for BYU. Here's the handoff to Jenkins in the backfield. Knocked down. Todd Johnson scoops through to grab him around the ankle, bring him down. Johnson fell heavily on it. Right knee, and he's hobbling back to the huddle now. When you get down into this part of the red zone, Kevin, the key right here for the front seven, or at least the front five, is to stay low, pile through there. You see everybody taking the blockers out of the out of the mix. Todd Johnson, Brendan Jones there to make the play. Third down and six for BYU. Margin hooks wide to the left side. Sataki and Jenkins split backs. Paterik dropping back, scrambling to the 10, the 5, throws into the end zone. The pass dropped in the end zone. Off a hangaway, the tight end drops the football. So a fourth down situation in six now for BYU. Boy, they bring on the kicking team. I can see why Lavelle Edwards is not real happy right there. You've got a quarterback. That is great in being elusive, scrambling around, buying time to deliver the football. Right here, really no pressure on him. Throws a duck out there, but his big tight end couldn't come up with it. Harrison did a nice job to keep Federick back behind the line of scrimmage and keep him from scrambling for the touchdown. The field goal attempt is up, and it is good. Owen Potchman from Mercer Island gets BYU on the board. It's 14-3 Washington. Washington leading BYU 14 to 3 in an impressive drive by BYU stalls inside the Husky 10 yard line. Eight plays 62 yards in two minutes and 10 seconds. Owen Potchman with a 23 yard field goal. Key play was that 35 yard pass to UW's five yard line. The Huskies once again hold in their own red zone. Joe Jarzinka. Along with Butler in tandem, back at their own five to receive the kick. Butler steps in front of Jarzinka to take it. Hard cut, 15, 20, 25, 30. Has a blocker ahead as Jarzinka leads the interference at 50. Torrey cuts back, still on his feet. A man ahead of him, 30, 20. 10, 5, he dives into the end zone, no flags, Butler goes the distance.
How about Jarzinka? Butler steps in front of Jarzinka at the five, and Joe then speeds ahead of Turi to lead the interference, Sonny. And the PAT knocked down and blocked. They can score. Picked up by BYU. They try to scoot the ball ahead. The Huskies have it. And a flag on the play. Militich, the fourth string quarterback. And the holder on special teams. The forward pass was thrown by the person who recovered the fumble. By rule, that penalty with is the decline. PAT is no good. Now the officials are going to wipe out, disregard the flag. And the PAT blocked. Take a look at it again. Right up the middle. Someone for getting their little duties in there. And as we said, we have a lot of young people, the Huskies do, on special teams. Real nemesis for them so far in the young season, but just an in, just no point right here. Here, That's what you were talking about, Kevin, was the Jarzinka up front leading the way for Ture Butler. Ture, look at those eyes move around. He's looking for his angle. Right there, a good move. Potchman could not come up with the grab, reaching for air. Ture Butler, again, two, oh, two big touchdowns. That was a great move. 98 yard. Now watch Joe Jarzinka break out to the right side. And Butler right on his tail. That's what you like, a little interference out there. No illegal blocks. Nice big cut back there. That block right there was close, but it was all good. <laughs> 98 yards. Outstanding. Huskies lead 20 to 3. Ninety eight yards is that the longest kickoff return for TD we'll find out. Here's the kick lofted up to the BYU 28 yard line where Mike Schiffler fields it and falls out of bounds and that's where BYU will start their action. First and 10 BYU with 12 24 on the board here in the third. Well, that's two weeks in a row now that BYU has blocked an extra point. Lavelle Edwards happy with that, but not happy with the way his special teams performed after they scored. Anthony Allen has the longest kickoff return against Pittsburgh back in 1979 at 99 yards. Federick back to throw to Ronnie Jenkins over the middle. Double team knockdown. Purple shirts all over him. Jenkins leans ahead for maybe the first down at his own 38-yard line. Jim Craig, teammate of Sonny's. I believe Jim Craig is a teammate here. Yeah, he was. 1971, return one for 99 yards against TCU. George Guttormson, 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 I believe is the way you pronounce his name. you got to go back to 1924. Aren't too many people around who remember George. 98 yards against Whitman College. So Jerry Butler is second in the all-time record book for longest kickoff return for a touchdown. 20 to 3 Washington. BYU ball. First and 10. Federick rolling out, handing off. And skipping ahead. Gaining maybe two on the play. Going off left tackle is Ronnie Jenkins. Husky defense has been outstanding this afternoon. They have played real well up front. And you know, give the I don't know, Kevin Federick, I think, would love like to say. Let's see now, if my receivers would cop four or five of those drop balls, we might have a little better situation right now. Margin Hooks comes in to replace Ronnie Jenkins. Hooks will line up at the flanker left side. Split backs, better back to throw, and again, hard rush. Steps into the pocket, and man, oh man, did they squeeze him there. Mac Tuiaia on the scene. Josh Smith was there as well. They hammered him. Well, you see what happens when they're, they only had two men downfield. One was double covered and one was covered like a blanket. Federick right here looking for the man. He thought he was going to get one on one, which he had, but he was covered. Good sack block, but again, the pursuit was there and they were able to bring him down. Third and nine for BYU. They're one for nine in third down situations today. Which 
Tells the tale of the Husky defense. Fenerick rolling out to his right. Jabari is a hard rush. Clavered him. Pass out on the right side. Knocked down. Incomplete pass. Aaron Roderick had it hit him right in the shoulder pad. Jabari Issa introduced himself to Kevin Federick. Nigel Burton out there in coverage. Well, that's a lot of weight landing on you when you got Jabari Issa hitting you, but right there, Nigel Burton did get a hand on it, looked like Kevin, to Aaron Roderick's uh, demise. He wouldn't, wasn't able to hang on to it. Joe Jarzinka back to receive the punt from J.D. Hartsfield. Hartsfield has been busy. Uh, BYU now one for ten in third down situations. Hartsfield gets under. That one's high to the air. Wobbles down to the ten. Joe dropped it. Picked it up. Trying to scoot out to the left side. Juggles the ball after it. Grabs it at the five. Trying to cut back ten. Jitterbuggin through traveling ahead of the fifteen. What an odyssey. <laughs> For little Joe, but he's able to, number one, get the football back, and number two, actually improve his position by about five yards. <laughs> we'll be right back. Brock Hewitt on the field for the first time here in this second half. 20 to 3 count, 10 18 to go. Third quarter play already. The Huskies have struck for a score. A 98 yard kickoff return for Truri Butler. The extra out of Cascade High School up in Everett. He's accounted for two touchdowns this afternoon. Pat Reddick in the backfield gets the handoff. Actually, it's Maurice Shaw trying to muscle ahead for. Well, just trying to get to the line of scrimmage. Morris had seven carries in the first half. And then Willie Hurst got his opportunity. And Willie had seven carries for seven yards. Well, sometimes a quarterback wishes he had a different cadence count because right here, too much activity. He saw him coming up the middle. Other than burning a timeout, there's not much they could do on that play. Rob Morris, a middle linebacker from Napa, Idaho, makes the stop. So it's second and 12 now. Loss of a couple on the play. Huskies in command of the football game. You were back to throw, slings it over the middle. That pass juggled into the air, but grabbed by Reggie Davis, who takes two tacklers down to the 23 yard line. That's a real testament to the strength of Reggie Davis. Good job. Concentration right there, hanging on the football. BYU with a little nickel package back there and have an extra defensive back. You got Rob Warcup, number 28, out there in coverage, and number four, Chris Ellison. That's like grabbing that tough rebound in the middle, Kevin. I'm telling you with people hanging on you. They bring Gerald Harris in motion right to left. Washington third and three. And Shaw is the only back. Ewart rolling out to the left side. He's got Harris running with him and Brock throws that one away. That one skipped in front of Gerald Harris who was closely covered out there by Brian Gray stride for stride with Gerald Harris. So Washington's Ryan Fleming will drop back at his own eight yard line to kick the football away. Brock this afternoon 12 for 22. A touchdown but two interceptions. Fleming has averaged just shy of 42 yards of boot this afternoon. He'll gather it. Wheel it up into the air. The spiral is caught at the 41 yard line. And that is where BYU will set up shop. The Huskies lead it 20 to 3 with 843 left in the third. We'll be back to Husky Stadium in a moment.
Cougars trying to get something going right now. They've been held to just three points on the board. The last drive was impressive, but it stalled inside the Husky red zone. Here's Federick trying to fling one across the middle. Under through Jenkins, who had to contort the body just to get a hand on it. Flicked up into the air, and Johnson was nearly there to make the catch and the interception. But the ball fluttered to the ground, and so the Huskies will set up with BYU in a second and ten situation now at their own 42. Take a look there at Federick's numbers, 11 for 21. Hate to keep saying it, but all the drops, he'd be up there around 17 for 21. Federick was 19 of 30 and had a TD down in Alabama two weekends ago. Last weekend at home against ASU with Ronnie Jenkins. Here's the rush. Lester Towns! Drops Federick behind the line for a sack. Washington has gotten to Federick a few times today. For that time, Lester Towns fought his way through in 65 for BYU. John Skiba had no chance of blocking him. Right there, you see the center, but Skiba right there going, oh man, Lester, you're too tough for me. <laughs> oh, and then he headbutts three or four of his own players. Man, that's tough. That's tough. Third and 16 for BYU. Hard rush, Federick back on the tiptoes, flings it over the middle, pass complete for the first down at the 45-yard line of the Huskies. Ben Horton with a reception and the flag on the play down near the point of the catch. Todd Johnson in coverage made the tackle. That penalty is declined. Result of the penalty play is the first BYU down. Holding on defense the call, and so the Cougars are in business at the Husky 45-yard line. But again, Federick had a lot of time to deliver the football. Very nice throw right there. The Husky defense with zone coverage back there. Wide outs left and right for BYU. Federick with a handoff, little delay. Ronnie Jenkins up to the 41 yard line, stacked up and dropped. Ken Walker, another, repeat after me, freshman. He's a redshirt freshman from Honolulu, Hawaii. Get on the stuff. He's a big kid. Good blocking up front. He's in on the tackle, but Ronnie Jenkins was able to pick up some solid yardage. About four yards, second and six now for BYU. Better dropping back, flings left side. Shitake with the catch, muscled down at the 40 yard line. Gain of maybe one. Good reaction by Todd Johnson that time, reading the play. Very quick throw by Federick, but Todd Johnson was out there in coverage. This guy's all over the field. Former walk on Kevin's doing an outstanding job today. Third and five for BYU. BYU with third down conversions, two for ten. Wideouts left and right. Federick hard rush over the middle. Pass complete for the first down. The big tight end rumbles across to the Husky 34 yard line. Off a hangaway. A 250 pound sophomore from Hawaii. I was going to say that, Kevin. And being up 6'3, you know he's probably not quite 6'3, so he's real round. Nigel Burton trying to find a way to get around him. Whiteouts now to the left side. Flanker to the right for Kevin Fateri, first and ten. And the ball at the 33-yard line of the Huskies. Fateri with a turn and the handoff. And charging straight ahead is Junior Mawe, the freshman, 5'11". Ball carrier for BYU. The Huskies are playing a lot of people on defense right now. A lot of substitutions up front. Front seven, you look at right there. Nice little trap block. In the middle. Well, actually, that was Aaron Cup, I beg your pardon, from Sublimity, Oregon. He's a Northwestern. 
senior is 235. Paterik back to throw. Post pattern left side. Ball in the air. Up for grabs. Knocked down. In coverage, J.D. Smith. And chasing the football for the Cougars was Aaron Roderick. And Smith was with him stride for stride. Smith stands nearly six feet. And he kind of towered over Aaron that time. Pretty good coverage, I tell you. Jermaine Smith, you know, he's, he's had a lot of penalties called on him over the last two years, but this time stayed right with it. Of course, BYU thinks it's uh, face guarding, which it could have been very close. Third and five for BYU. Federick, fake handoff, play action, scrambling, loops it out to the open man right side, leaping over one tackler and leaning ahead to the 10-yard line is up a hung away. Man, that big guy got 250 pounds in the air and actually hurdled an oncoming tackler. That was impressive. Very good play. Again, you're looking at Federick being able to get rid of the football with a lot of pressure on him, knowing where to throw it. Opa hanging away right there over the top. I think to Ray Butler's glad he hurdled. Back to AA finally caught up with him. Here's the handoff left side. Ronnie Jenkins to the five to the two. And he's caught and brought down just shy of the goal line. Brendan Jones finally was able to corral Ronnie Jenkins. Ball spotted at the Husky one yard line. 20 to three, Washington leading. With 4.46 left in the third, this could change the complexion of this game here if BYU is able to score. BYU has always been good up front with their blocking schemes, technique. That time, everything worked like you drew it up. And Ronnie Jenkins is starting to find a little bit of room. Backs in the eye. Shiitake the up back. They'll give to Federick. In the first surge, he was stopped. Then he chugs and leans forward, and it's a touchdown. Kevin Federick lurching over the pile, scores BYU's first TD of the afternoon. Good second effort by the youngster. Potsman on for the extra point now. The snap, the hold, the kick is up. And it's good. So the Cougars put their first TD on the board, and it's 20 to 10, Washington. The 424 left in the third will return in a moment. BYU, different football club here in this third quarter than the one we saw frustrated in the first half. Going to work, first and ten. Federick back to throw, sets, fires over the middle, nearly intercepted. Daniels in coverage. Nearly had the pick. He had both hands on that ball. Husky coaches were hoping that Daryl Daniels would come up with that pick. Again, Federick looking to his right, being a lefty, gets a little bit more on the ball. That one was good coverage that time by Daryl Daniels. Daniels, the sophomore. Second and 10. Ball at the 47 of Washington. BYU trailing by 10. Federick back to throw. Knocked down. Sacked again. And driven back into his own zone. Back at the 43 yard line. This is something the Huskies seem to have a lot of success when they drop off and just rush four people. Nothing much happens, but when they bring some of the farm, you see right there, you've got one, two, three, four, five people rushing, collapsing the pocket, and even Daryl Daniels on the weak side comes in 
I tell you what, being a quarterback, Kevin Federick is not very tall. He's only about six feet. It puts all those big people in his way. Marcus Harrison able to loop around Jabari East's interference and make the tackle on Fe Federick. And BYU trying to check at the line. The Huskies were blitzing, stunning. And it unsettled one of the big men up front, John Tate, I think, came offside. Procedure call on, motion call on Wash on uh, BYU, beg your pardon. So the ball is going to be set at the 40-yard line, and it gives him a third and 23 deal. Well, the first time we mentioned John Tate's name, it's for a penalty, but he must be doing the job if we're not mentioning a Husky rushing from that side. Tate is 6'7 and 3'10, a junior, and a pro prospect, Federick. Back to throw, flushed out of the pocket, scrambling, throwing on the run. The pass tipped away by Butler. No flags. Great play in front of the BYU bench. Aaron Roderick, the intended receiver, I believe, but it was Butler who steps in front to deflect the ball away. Butler's had a whale of an afternoon, and listen to that crowd. Federick again flushed out of the pocket. Odell George rushing him from the outside, being run around by Big John Tate we just mentioned. This was a really good throw by Kevin Federick, but to Ray Butler, the Husky DB there to knock it down. Hartsfield back to punt, and Jarzinka to field it. Standing at his 20-yard line, Hartsfield gets under it. Sends a wobbler down to the 15. Joe fields it cleanly, steps away from two tacklers, trying to speed out to the right side, but knocked down from behind. Hangs on to the football, and the Huskies take over at their own 19-yard line, leading 20 to 10 with a minute 51 left here in the third. Teray is having a great afternoon. You know, Kevin, I mentioned earlier, I've seen this kid play for a long time. He raised, played for a local youth group, Richmond Junior Football. Seen him make a lot of those kind of runs he's made today, and defensive plays like that. Well, the Huskies will have their hands full next weekend when they're in Lincoln to take on Nebraska. Brian, uh, make that uh, Maurice Shaw, beg your pardon. Rumbles ahead to about the 19-yard line. Just got across the line of scrimmage. Huskies are going to take on Nebraska next weekend. And you Husky fans, come enjoy the tailgate with a flavor at the Nebraska Union open three hours prior to the game. For information, 1-800-A-U-W-A-L-U-M. They're going to have a big old get-together out there in Lincoln next weekend. So Ewart with a minute 10 left in the third in shotgun formation. Rolling left, throwing on the run, pass complete, but jarred away. They're going to rule it incomplete. The ball poked away from Todd Elstrom by Derek Stevenson, the linebacker. Incomplete pass. That time it appeared that Gerald Harris was open on the corner route. Maybe we can see it in this play. They're kind of moved the pocket out a little bit for Brock Heward. Whoops it to the outside for the short, but 19 right there, as you see, Hashi Robertson was really out of the play. See Gerald Harris going towards the corner. Looked like he broke open, but Brock had to get rid of the football. Ewart without his number one man two weekends ago, Dane Looker, who had the 11 receptions to set a Husky record. Now will give way in a third and 10 situation to Marcus Tui. Yes, it's so full cool draw play for Marcus, and BYU knew what was coming because they saw it in the first quarter. Marcus has dropped down. Well shy of the first down at his own 22 yard line and just like that the Huskies will have to kick it away. Ryan Fleming back at his own five yard line. BYU has moved the ball well this afternoon. The question in this game here in the remaining moments. With the whole fourth quarter yet to play is can the Husky defense continue to make these stops that they've been turning in. BYU has been moving the ball well. Fleming back to punt, steps up to his 10. Moves this one short. Going to take a Husky bounce to the 50 and then rolls back to the Husky 49-yard line. So once again, BYU's in business at midfield. With Washington leading 20 to 10. We'll come back in a moment.
Cougar football. And a whistle. Flags fly on the play. Just as Federick pulled away from center. 11 seconds left in the third quarter with Sunday six killer Kevin Calabro at Husky Stadium in Seattle. Huskies ranked number nine by Associated Press coming into this afternoon's game. Huskies are eight and one in games after a bye weekend over the last nine years. And they won 12 straight home openers dating back to 1985. Oklahoma State, the last team to beat UW here during the home opener. Well, Coach Steve Morton there right there is telling his offensive linemen we want to keep it that way. Get it up to nine and one. Huskies four man front. Federick in the shotgun. First and 15. Hard rush. Steps up by the blitz. Still on his feet to his own 45. Slings aside. Our pass intercepted. To the five. To the 45. Hakeem Akbar with the pick out of the open field. And he was able to get it into BYU territory. The freshman. Another freshman comes up with a play. <laughs> How many times have we said that today, Kevin? Great job right there. It showed great hands. Young man staying where he's supposed to be in coverage. So the Huskies have the football, leading 20 to 10 to begin the fourth quarter in a moment. Back at Husky Stadium in Seattle with Sunday six killer Kevin Calabro just underway here in this fourth quarter of play. The interception by Hakeem Akbar from Riverside, California. As the Husky defense again makes an important stop here. Hard rush on Paterik. When we first saw that play, it looked like a great throw by Paterik, but on the replay, you can tell this, as you mentioned, Kevin, that was a horrible throw. But Akbar doesn't care. He got the interception. Washington goes to work. Trying to add to their 10 point lead. In the third quarter, UCLA 21, Houston 14. Akbar, a tough kid from Riverside, California. Good size, 6 1. He was a point guard in high school. Here's the fake reverse coming around the right side. Out there to the 40, down to the 34 yard line for the Huskies is Jawan Hooker. That little flanker reverse left to right. Trying to use some of that indoor 55 meter speed. <laughs> I'd like to use that as much as I could also. Right here you can just tell the Jets are burning. Nowhere to really go. He kind of runs out of room. And it's a great job by the senior defensive back Jason Walker to play the sideline and not allowing him to get around him to his left. The national champion of the 55 meter indoors last year. You Warren Hooker. Back to throw, play action. You were throwing it up top. There's Harrison in zone, right through his fingertips in the end zone. But great coverage down there. Brian Gray was all over him like a bad suit. Very good coverage. Not a bad play call with second and two to go. See right here that. Oh, Harris wants to stay outside. The ball was thrown in the inside where the coverage was and. As you say, Brian Gray was in great position. So a third and two. Ball at the 37-yard line. BYU with 122 yards this half, and the Huskies have been stymied. Here's the handoff to Shaw. Oh, man, he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. Again, we saw that earlier in the game. Beginning of the second, just before halftime, the Huskies had third and inches, or fourth and inches also, and, and tried to go wide. Hand off to Maurice Shaw. And a big play by the backer. And who else? How about Rob Morris again? Morris 6'2 and 250. Great instincts. Fleming the punter. He's had some difficulty here in the second half. We're in his distance range from what he's been punting. Going to try to hang this up high into the corner, but this time he really put a lick on it. 
Huskies try to get down there in coverage, unable to do so. It takes a high hop into the end zone, and BYU will take it at their own 20-yard line with 323 left to play in a game. Washington clings to a 20 to 10 lead. Will return in a moment. Brock Ewart and the Husky offense has sputtered here in the second half. Kevin Federick, quarterback at BYU, as BYU right now with more time of possession in the second half, and Brigham Young actually has outdueled the Huskies through the air, 161 yards to 137. But a motion penalty on BYU now backs them up to the 15 yard line. So it'll be first and 15 at their own 15. Federick brings him out. He's got Ronnie Jenkins in the slot to the left side. Sataki is the lone back. Double receivers on the right. Federick back to throw. Stumbled a bit. Steps up into the pocket. Hard rush. Knocked down. Flattened. He was able to get across the line of scrimmage and have a gain of maybe a one. Mac Tui Aiea and Jabari Issa team to make the step. You know, there are all kinds of mental mistakes going on down there when the quarterback has to go out to his receiver and say, hey, man, you got to come back. I don't have enough time to wait for you to get open. And the reason why is right here, the pocket absolutely collapses. Three Huskies in there to give Federick a nice little welcome. Second 13 for Kevin Federick. The left-handed gunslinger steps back to his own 10. Scrambling hit hard again. He's brought down. Todd Johnson rips the football away. It's loose, but recovered by BYU. And Federick again takes a hard shot, and he's on the stadium turf and rolls slowly to his feet. Huskies applying a lot of pressure right now. You saw right there the eyes of Kevin Federick is one of, man, how many more of these can I take? See right there, five sacks a day, plus a lot of rushes, a lot of hurries. Right here, you see it on the far side coming in. Whoa, somebody misses, but they stay with it. Todd Johnson, Jabari Issa in there to knock it out. Federick has had been sacked prior to today's game eight times in two ball games. He's taken some licks. He's in the shotgun. Sets back in his own five. Cocks the arm. Throws an intermediate pass to Jenkins, and he drops the football. Ronnie Jenkins has dropped, by my count, at least four passes this afternoon. The Husky defense holds. And BYU will have to kick. Lavelle Edwards doesn't change his expression too much. Still yelling a little encouragement to his young quarterback. Jarzinka back at his own 45 yard line. And Joe's, he's had some experiences today trying to hang on to the football. This one wobbles into the air and it's short. Oh, he's interfered with back at his, or BYU's 45 yard line. Schiffler got down there and his over exuberance made contact with Jarzinka before the ball had arrived spun him around actually knocked him to the floor. Both flag personal foul kick catch interference with contact 15 yard penalty first down. Interfering with the intended return specialist Joe Jarzinka cost BYU 15 yards on the penalty. When we come back, Washington's in great shape with 11.40 to play, leading by 10. Back in a moment.
yards, and it takes over the football here in the fourth quarter with 11.40 remaining and leading by 10, 20 to 10. Willie Hurst is back in the ball game. The freshman is the lone back. Pat Conniff is the H-back in motion. Gerald Harris wide to the left. And Hooker wide to the right. Hewitt, big handoff, play action, flips wide open with it. Conniff at 20, 15, 10, cut back five. Knock to the goal line, dive, touchdown! Pat Conniff! A tremendous play call there, Sonny. BYU had all the action to the opposite side, and Pat Conniff was sneaking all alone. I think they're waving it off, Kevin. It looked to me like he stepped out of bounds on about the two. We'll get a good look on this replay. Good play call, like you mentioned, Pat Conniff. Great effort. Look at him protect the football. Watch his right foot. Right, yep. not no, his left foot comes around and actually his whole body's out of bounds. And you can see the <laughs> look at the official right there indicate touchdown, but a good call as they reviewed it. He's out of bounds twice, three times actually on the play. <laughs> Here's York now knocking on the door at the three, handoff up the middle, and it's kind of stacked up at the two. Well, with that completion, that was Brock Hewitt's third of eight in this half, Kevin. It's been a little off whack. Once again, it bears repeating Dane Looker, his main man of two weekends ago with the 11 receptions against Arizona State, out of the lineup with a, quad, a, a, a deep bruise in the quad muscle and uh, did warm up, did dress before the game. But they want to hold him out if possible. Second down. Ball at the two. The turn. The handoff. Willie Hurst trying to go right side. He had a knock down. <laughs> at the three yard line. Rob Morris in on the stop. Rob Morris reaps the benefits of a down front that can really penetrate. You see the Husky offensive line and being driven upwards. Standing straight up right there. That's not going to help you out on the goal line. Chad Ward's going to have to fire out low. When you're up like that, it's a little tough for, to get it over that goal line. Third down and two. Ball at the two-yard line. They clear out the backfield. Wide receivers right and left. Ewart back. Throws over the middle. Intended for Reggie Davis. That ball was simply too hot and underthrown. Incomplete pass sets up a fourth down situation. The Huskies kicking game today has been shaky. Will they go for it? Looks like they will. Again, it's a situation right here. Reggie Davis getting chucked at the line of scrimmage. Something that you might expect because Reggie Davis does not weigh that much and you get a bigger linebacker on you that can stop you in your tracks. You're not going to get where you need to be to complete that pass. Scott Linehan, the offensive coordinator, relaying the play. Jim Lambright looking on with Gerald Harris out to the right side. Chris Jergens in the slot. Willie Hurst is the lone back. Fourth down, two-yard line. Here they go. You're an under center, going to drop back. Fling here to the near side. That ball's overthrown. Intended receiver was your Warren Hooker. Robertson was in tight coverage. So the Huskies give it up on downs right on the doorstep and well, BYU takes over at their own two. Well, I know you've got uh, your passing offense in when you're on the two yard line like this, but tell you, everybody's coming and BYU, Kevin, when they're down in the red zone in this territory, they will blitz you 88% of the time and you saw it right there. Well, and defenses ordinarily have the advantage when you're passing that close to the goal line, don't they? I mean, you don't have a lot of room for your Receivers are run routes. So Federick takes over in his own two. Hands off, stepping over the line of scrimmage, charging ahead to the six yard line is Ronnie Jenkins. Todd Johnson there to make the stop. It's a nice matchup down there. What might have an injured player? Nigel Burton's down. May have turned an ankle. 
Hopefully that's about all he did. But I was watching that last matchup on them punching the ball out, Kevin. He had Joe Wong, the tackle for BYU, is 315, and Jeremiah Farms is maybe 230, 235. Whoa. Todd yep. Johnson coming in for the tackle. You saw it right there. Right on Nigel's left leg. Nigel Burton checks out. Wanda May Davis, I believe, is in. He or Akeem Akbar. They try to go left side. Ronnie Jenkins knocked down. And on the stop was Hakeem Weatherspoon, the rover. 20 to 10 Huskies lead at 9 11 to go in the fourth quarter of play. Huskies in a lot of situations are going to their third deep. Brendan Jones is out there with Weatherspoon in the defensive backfield for the Huskies. Huskies four man front blitz coming Johnson safety on Frederick. Are they indicating safety? I don't believe so. No, they, they're saying they got him on the six inch line. Holy cow. Johnson came from the near side on a slant and nobody touched him. Boy, you can see him coming all the way right here. Todd Johnson coming in there, flying in to see where Federick is. Fans are booing, but really his his main lead foot was yep. in the field of play yeah the right foot was not was much <laughs> straddling the goal line is what he was doing when Todd Johnson made the stop here's the snap to Hartsfield who literally steps up from the back of the end zone booms this one high to the 40 Jarzika fields it cuts middle bounces outside 30 going to the sideline rolled down to the 29 yard line for once again the Huskies deep in BYU territory takeover <laughs> I was just going to say, little Joe doesn't get a lot of yards, but he's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't get a lot of yards, but he goes a long way to get him. <laughs> we'll be right back. Well, after Washington stalled on four downs at the BYU two, Todd Johnson makes a tremendous stop on Kevin Federick at about the half yard line. And BYU subsequent punt fielded by Jarzinka. The Huskies with a football at BYU 29 yard line. Take a look, Todd Johnson coming in, looking like Jerry Jensen from a year ago. Trying to wrap him up, but where he made the contact and where he stopped his um, forward progress, Federick looked like he still had a foot in bounds. Turn field of play. They tend to Nigel Burton's left leg, and that's a good sign. You're able to move the foot and the ankle, flex the knee. Hewitt back to throw, flings it to Reggie Davis, makes the catch, took a hard shot, muscles that ball to the 24 yard line to pick up a five or six Chris Ellison with a stop Reggie Davis is going to tell Brock hey I don't mind catching the balls but get them to me a little sooner I don't want to catch him and get nailed as soon as I make the reception Davis four catches 27 yards this afternoon he had five catches for two TDs in Tempe 14 days ago Huskies lead at 20 to 10 7 21 left clock ticking we're in the fourth period 
Huskies with wide outs left and right. And the H back in motion. That's Jurgens. Here's the turn, the handoff, and the tackle. Willie Hurst got the assignment, but was dropped behind the line of scrimmage by Byron Frisch. We haven't mentioned his name much in the second half, but that was a, another example of fine play from that defensive lineman. Byron Frisch is having a good day. See right there, all he's doing is following Aaron Dalen, the tackle, who was pulling in kind of a counter tray action to the right side. And of course, Byron Frisch has been around a little bit, just follows him and makes the play. Third and seven. Jerzyka and Harris wide right. The lone man here to the near side is Hooker. Back to throw is Ewart. Sets, Cox pumps, it's rushed out of the pocket, and he's able to squirm forward. Got chopped down at the knees at the 22 23 yard line. Tell you what, that blow right there, Brock Hewitt's going to be very sore for the next couple of days. We saw a similar hit to Dane Looker in an ASU game. Brock not been able to find anyone downfield. Pretty good protection, but that's a coverage rush right there where he's got to do something, get upfield, but. Boy, that could have been a lot worse. Rob Morris nailed it. Right above the knees. Hewitt now. Four yards to go for the first down. Back to throw quick drops. Lands a pass. Knocked down and nearly intercepted. You know, the Kevin. receiver was Reggie Davis. I'm sorry, but when you keep running those routes at a, an angle like that to the out of bounds, it's easier for the defensive player to stay with you. If you're not going downfield and crisply cutting that route off, it's easy. You're not driving the defender away. Watch Reggie Davis on this play. It's an angle route. He just rounds it off nice and easy like that. A lot of DBs, and Jason Walker's been around. He can react to that ball a lot quicker. Well, the Huskies on that fourth down situation. Surrender the football now to BYU with 5.43 left. Kevin Federick back to throw. The left-hander steps up out on the flat. Ball tipped, intercepted. Body is ruled out of bounds down there. J.D. Smith makes the catch on the tip pass, but he was floating out of bounds. BYU will get it back. Good look, Federick, to the looking to his left. Good man, not a real tight spiral, but again, Todd Johnson does a great job to get back in coverage and very close. But you can see on that replay, J.D. Smith was just barely out. Federick has been incomplete in the last five attempts. He's back to throw again. Guns this one out here to the near side. And Turi Butler was the only man in the neighborhood. Uh, incomplete pass. Brings up a third and ten for BYU. I tell you, Kevin, it just seems like tee off on quarterback day. Both <laughs> teams are going after it. Next weekend, the Huskies are in Lincoln. Romani Cristo. The count, they call him in Lincoln, the third string quarterback. Led them to the victory last weekend. Nebraska Idol this weekend. We got the governor right there on the sideline. Lavelle Edwards looking on. Federick in the shotgun. Guns it out to the far side. One on one play. Shoestring tackle. Trying to lurch forward is Shiitake. Actually, it was Aaron Roderick. Shiitake coming over to lead block for him. Guess who made that play? Todd Johnson, was he in the neighborhood again? Let's Number see. eight, Nigel uh, Burton Nigel, back in the ball game. Nigel's back. Did a great job right there, squaring his shoulders up, not committing either way, making contact with Roderick and hanging on, <laughs> hanging on to everything he could. BYU fourth and two, deep in their own end, will punt. Hartsfield at his 20. Bangs a high spiral. Jarzinka settles under it, takes it at the 30, stumbles, leans forward, and rolls ahead to the 40-yard line. They'll mark him down at the 36, 37-yard line of his own end. So the Huskies take it with 441 left in the game, leading 20 to 10. We'll return in a moment.
20 to 10 score. Washington on top with the football. 4:41 left in the contest. Ewart hand off to Willie Hurst and the rookie across the 40-yard line up to about the 42. Willie Hurst. Big time for the Huskies to burn some time right now with 4:24 left in the game. See if their young man here, Willie Hurst, can pop one for him. Hurst from Dominguez Hills in Compton, California, had a broken thumb. The only reason he didn't play in Tempe a couple of weekends ago. That is on the men now, and the second five is in the backfield. Wide receivers to the left. Here's the handoff to Hurst. Spins off tackle, upended. He was able to lean forward for pickup of two or three on the play. Rob Morris upends him. Gain of two, so call it third and three now. The ball resting at the Husky 43. Third down conversions this afternoon for Washington. Two for 14. And Marcus Tuyas Sopo will come in once again with Brock Ewart. Ewart will quarterback, and let's see if they put Marcus in the H back position. Nope, they're going to flank Ewart to the right, and Tuyas Sopo the quarterback. Wide receivers to the left. Marcus rolling left, looking to throw. Guns it out here, left side. Harris with the completion to the 45. Rolled down at the 41 yard line. Harris just went up five, turned, and there was Marcus rolling his way. Brian Gray, the corner for BYU, must have wondered what was happening with Brock Hewitt <laughs> splitting right to the right. But here we got Marcus Tuyasa Sopo doing more than just running an option. Throwing on the run, which he did so well in high school and also last year here. Great move right here for two reasons. Gerald Harris not trying to do anything fancy, but also staying inbounds to keep the clock running. Harris with his third catch of the afternoon. Actually his fourth. Here is York with a handoff to Willie Hurst, leaping over tackler, staying on his feet, taking a pile with him to the 30. Willie Hurst, an exciting young back. Boy, you can just see the explosiveness right there on a similar play in the first half. Brock Heward with that kind of handoff got nowhere. This time to Willie Hurst, you see, again, a deep, wide handoff, but able to cut it back a little bit. Nice little spin move. Chris Ellison there to make the tackle. He thought it took him a while. Brad Barton in on the stop. 217 remaining in the game. Huskies leading 20 to 10. Hurst with 11 carries for 20 yards. His first action is a Husky. Here's the handoff again to Willie. Muscles ahead. And he is down to about the 27 yard line. And there's a shove and a kick after the play. And now the, some of the Huskies and uh, the Cougars must be separated. Ellison actually shoved and then it appeared to actually take a kick at Brad Hutt. And I'm not sure what that action stemmed from. Well, usually it's for linemen going downfield to get a block, Kevin. You know, they'll come up late and they always say, keep going till the whistle blows. And it's hard to hear a whistle sometimes. You can't blame the big line. You got a big helmet on. You're grunting and snorting, trying to get to somebody. And <laughs> next thing you know, uh, there's a little DB you hone in on. Oh, Chad Ward knocked him down. I mean, just slung him down. And then Ellison came at him with two hands. Personal foul on Ellison, who will and come an over. Ejection. He will come over to the bench and will sit. We saw an ejection in Tempe two weekends ago, and J.D. Smith was heave hoed from the ball game, and what the last minute of the game, I believe it was. 20 to 10 score. Huskies lead the Cougars with a minute 58 clock running. Washington ranked number nine in the country, trying to hang on here in the last two minutes of play for the win. Ewart. Shot instructions at the line. Turn. Hands off. Willie up the middle. Willie stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Willie 
The Butler did it. Not once, but twice. He picked up a fumble and ran for a TD as well. Ewart rolling out, flinging left side, pass complete. Knocked down at the seven yard line is John Westra. Tell you, Sonny, you, you hit it right on the head during the break. Can't wait to see the stat on the number of players used by Washington in this ball game. <laughs> They're getting a lot of young people into the ball game, getting them some experience against a very good, I've been real impressed with BYU's defense today. They've really kind of shut the Husky offense down. Tere Butler himself has accounted for two scores. One on special teams and one on defense. Ewart has hooked up with seven different receivers today. 20 to 10 count. Here's the handoff to Willie Hurst. Willie up the middle. It's about the four yard line. Huskies trying to grind it out, but time running down. I think they were trying to get Willie his first TD of his career here. Two seconds, one, triple zero show, game over. And the Washington Huskies have now reeled off 13 consecutive home opening victories here at Husky Stadium with this win over the Cougars, 20 to 10. Jim Lambright and Washington goes to 2 and 0 on the year, while BYU falls to 1 and 2. We'll be back in just a moment. Well, the Huskies go to 2 and 0 on the season, defeating BYU by the score of 20 to 10 and once again successfully defending the home turf. They have now reeled off 13 straight home opening victories. And Sonny, uh, I don't think the Huskies played their A game today, and that's what I think is impressive about their victory over BYU. This is after all a team that clobbered ASU last weekend. Well, it is a team game and you have to win at all facets whether it be special teams defense and offense and I'll tell you what the Huskies had a lot of problems on offense today Brock Heward wasn't sharp but give credit to BYU they played a heck of a ball game and the Husky defense was sensational led by Ture Butler for Sunny Six Killer I'm Kevin Calabro saying so long from Husky Stadium where the final score is once again Washington 20 BYU 10.